Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of our series on how to pray. How to pray. And we've been focusing in on the beginning of the prayer that before we can even pray as Muslims, we have to first take the steps to purify ourselves. And the way that we pure ourse purify ourselves for the prayer is by starting off with the wudu. And we've been speaking about how there are sunans of the wudu and there are pillars of the wudu. Who can take the mic and explain to us what, tell us what all, not just one or two. Who thinks that he or she can explain and name all the pillars of the wudu. I don't want a one answer. I don't need no babies. I want somebody to get on the mic and say, Layla, I'm going to tell you all the pillars of the wudu. Who would like to try to see if they can name or list all of the pillars of the wudu? Anyone? All right. All of the pillars, okay, the intention, the sequence, the the uh, the hands, the the face, in the feet, in the arms. What do you guys think? Did she list them all? Does anyone I do anyone believe I she, she? Yeah, the head. Did I? I might have forgot something. Okay, so you guys say she missed something. Okay, they say yeah. she missed the head. You didn't say the head. Okay, somebody else get on the mic and name all the parts of the, the pillars of the wudu. Do. Who would Can like to try it? Go ahead. Intention, uh, sequence, like sister said, uh, it's the head, the arms, and the feet. The face, uh, the arm, and the feet. Okay, did he name them all? What do you guys say? Did he name them all? He missed a part. Yes, he did. Okay, let's see if you can name them. Give me all okay. the pillars of the wudu. Okay, um, your intention, the sequence, face, head, I mean face, arms, head, and feet. Did she name all the pillars of the wudu? Or did she miss some? We're going to get yeah. it right one of these days. Yeah. Okay, somebody else, take the mic. Give me the pillars of the wudu. Uh, the Wait a minute. Uh, okay. Ifti has the mic. Go ahead. Okay, you start with your intention. And then it has to be in the correct sequence. And then it's your hands, your face your um, head, your arms, and your feet. That is the correct answer. For those of you who didn't get it right the first time, you want to know why y'all didn't get it right the first time? I can tell that you guys are not making wudu in sequence. You're not following the sequence. Because if you were following the sequence correctly, when you make your personal wudu, after all the years that y'all been Muslim, some of y'all been Muslim for a hundred years. If y'all were doing the sequence correctly, it would your mind, that part of the brain would automatically imagine that you are making wudu and you would have done just like her, put it in the sequence <laughs> and got them all right. So I want everybody to write it down. Wait a minute, let me ask this question here because every time I ask this question, I get other answers too. <clears throat> Is saying Bismillah a pillar of the wudu? 
What do you guys think about that? It's saying Bismillah, a pillar of the wudu. Metro Lady said it yesterday too. This is the second time. Is Bismillah a pillar of the wudu? Can anyone answer that? No. It no, it is not. Okay, Sister M Metro. A pillar means that if you don't do it, your wudu is not accepted. Don't confuse. I didn't ask for the sunnins. I want to know what are the pillars? What are the things that if I don't do, my wudu is not accepted and my prayer is not accepted. And if I don't pray, I'm going to hell. I want y'all to remember whenever we say that you have to do something, that means if you don't do it, it's not accepted and you could go to hell. Think about it like that. That's how I remembered pillars and sunnahs. When I was learning religion when I was a kid, and then when I met Sheikh Morsi 25 years ago, 30 years ago, he told me, Sister Layla, imagine that if you don't do it, you're going to hell. If you don't do it, it won't be accepted. That's how you remember stuff. So when I ask for the pillars, you tell me what is it if I don't do when I make wudu, my prayer is not accepted. And if my prayer is not accepted, that means I can go to hell. I bet y'all get them pillars right then. So, brother um, 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 Malik, what are the pillars of the wudu? I mean, a friend's note. What are the pillars of the wudu? Say them again now. And imagine you making wudu. Yeah, the reason why I got mixed up because I do my hands, my nose, and my mouth, then I would have went to it. Okay. Intention, sequence, hands, face, head, arms, feet. Right. Right. Just imagine that you making wudu. And as you making it, as I'm washing that body part, which is a pillar, which is not. Okay, let's see. Sister Bent Muhammad wrote, intentions, hands and arms, face, head, including ears, feet, and the correct sequence. Good job, mashallah. Those are the pillars. That means if you don't wash or follow that procedure that's listed, your wudu is not accepted. If your wudu is not accepted, your prayer is not accepted. If your prayer is not accepted, you could go to hell. That's how you don't forget. I'm telling y'all it works. You know, I got a photographic memory. So I have to think of little shortcuts to remember. And I'm telling you that that's why it never, it never leaves. Think like that. Okay. So yesterday we talked about some, and there's a lot of other sunnins too. Bismillah we didn't talk about. Bismillah is a sunan. It's not a pillar of the wudu. The shahada is not a pillar. You don't have to ever in your life say Bismillah before you make wudu. You don't have to ever in your life recite the tashahu or the shahada when you make wudu. Okay, that's stuff that people do for extra reward. And we'll talk more about those pillars tomorrow. Today, what I'm going to do is test you. I got a quiz that I posted up last night for everyone. Let me see how well you guys can remember or retain the information that we discussed yesterday because I want to take this slow. Uh, Sheikh Morsi, I talked to him, and like he said, take it slow with you guys because a lot of you have been Muslim all your life, and you still don't know how to pray correctly too much information can overwhelm you. So I want to teach, then quiz. Teach, then quiz. That's how the prophet did. The prophet would give a lecture, then a quiz the next day. A lecture, then a quiz. And I'm going to do that so you can try to retain this. So, I don't want to put too much on you. Because you have to know how to pray correctly. This is something that we have to know. Let's look at the quiz here. Let's look at the first question, and I did post this up yesterday. What parts of the body 
are sooner parts of the wudu. What parts of the body do we wash when we make wudu that are sunans? Who would like to answer that? What parts of the body that we wash when making wudu are sunans? The nose and the mouth for sure, but I got confused yesterday when you were talking about a hand with a sunan rinsing the mouth. Okay, listen to the question. I didn't ask about rinsing. I asked. You just have to take the information. This is the effect of COVID. COVID Everybody I know who had COVID, y'all got a problem. My mother does that. Everybody I know that. My daughter. All y'all. J- Jayla. Y'all just got to think, friends. No. I didn't ask about all that hand stuff. I asked what parts of the body do you wash that is a sooner? That's it. No more. See? There you go. See how quick and easy that was? That's the COVID effect, guys. <laughs> Mashallah. The hands we already said is a pillar. The head we already said is a pillar. The arms we already said is a pillar. The feet is a pillar. So what else do we do? We do our nose and mouth. So they must be what? Soon ends. <laughs> see how easy. I want y'all to see how easy the religion is. Don't make it hard on yourself. Okay, you know what the pillars are, so that means anything else that we do is a sunin. And that brings us to the next question. What does it mean when we say that these are sunna actions? Because again, Arabic, this is a problem too. A lot of us don't understand the meaning of Arabic words. And by the way, the word sunna has about 15 different meanings. What does Sunna mean in the case of wudu? Because one Arabic word can mean a bunch of things. I spent the day, I just got home, so you got to excuse me. I spent the entire day since Fajr with my nieces and my sister. My nieces are all Emirates. They speak not just Khaliji, which is slang, the Arabic of the, of the Gulf, but they speak the Fusha fluently like my brother Isa does. My whole family speaks Fusha and whatever slang uh, uh, except me. And they explained that to me. They said the word Sunnah, should they told me to let you all know that the word Sunnah has more than one meaning. It's depending on how it's being used. So my niece told me, the one that's 20, she said, explain to your students that when it comes to wudu, if you're going to ask them, what does Sunna mean? Ask them, what does the, it mean in English in regards to making a wudu? I'm going to bring my nieces in here to try to teach because they are dynamic. You talk about scholarships. They're young girls, but them sisters are down in the dean like Layla Nasheba because my sister is down like me. You know, me and my sister and my oldest brother and Issa, we are people of the Dawah. We are people of the Sunna. We were raised to be people of the Sunna. And my sister did a good job. My nieces, y'all think I'm something? They all look like me and they are down in the Dean because they know the classical Arabic. Hello. They're all Hafiz too. And they know them Hadiths like me too. So, Tell me, guys, who can tell me what does the word Sunnah mean in this instance? When we say the Sunnah actions of the wudu, what does that mean? What are we saying in English? Who can explain what it means in English? The actions you don't have to do. You guys are not obligated. Good job. My niece just texted me. She told me to tell y'all, good job. Salam alaikum. Come on in here. <laughs> My little nieces, they're shy. <clears throat> they said, good job. They're exactly, good job. You know, things that we are not obligated to do. So I want y'all to remember that when it comes to, the, when we say this is a sooner action, we're saying that this is an action 
that I am doing that I don't have to do. But I'm doing it because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. And we want to show our love for him. And the best way to show your love for the prophet is to imitate him in everything that he does. That's from my little nieces. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, they great. I've got to bring them in here. I think you kids would love them. They would make great little teachers. They all got degrees in engineering, but they're um, like me with the dean. Good Lord, they're dynamic. Okay, wish Jayla would get with it. Let's look at the next question. Question number three. Washing the hands three times. Is that a sunan or a pillar of the wudu? People on Facebook, people on YouTube. And by the way, guys, let me share some information with everybody. I got an announcement to make. Y'all ready for it? We are streaming live, not only on, we are streaming simultaneously, not only on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and Telegram, but we are also streaming right now on Twitch and what's it called again? Tovo. Hello. Tovo and Twitch. All y'all have to do is type Suna followers and you will find our Suna followers channel in Twitch and Tovo right now. And if you join there, you can type on the screen and I can see your answers. I got it set up where I can see everything that you guys type. So whoever's on Tovo and whoever's on Twitch, come on with your answers too. So the question again is, let me put it up again so y'all can see. We got a new sister that just joined us in here from Twitch. Twitch, Twitch this. Washing the hands three times is a suna or a pillar of the wudu. What do you guys think? Y'all let me know if y'all can see the Twitch, the Twitch's answer too. Because she's typing her answer. Let's see if y'all can see her answer. Go ahead and type it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, Sister Jamila said it's a Sunnah. Do you guys agree? Masha'Allah, Masha'Allah. Good job, Sister um, Jamila. Good job, Sister Metro. Sister Metro said one, it's a Sunnah. One time is sufficient. Good job, Halima. Masha'Allah. And Sheikh, I mean, uh, Bent Muhammad said, washing hands three times is a sunnah. Good job. Good job, Halima. Is this Twitch? That's YouTube. Okay, the people on Twitch, keep typing. Because it should show up. I want to see how it looks on here when y'all type. Yeah, type, type. It'll make a Twitch uh, symbol. Is that Twitch? Huh. Yeah, just just try it. I, I set the codes last night. Okay, good job, guys. Washing the hands three times is a Sunnah action. If you wash your hands once, your wudu is accepted. And we went over the hadith where sometimes the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just washed the hands once. And sometimes he did it twice. The purpose was to show the people that they can do that. That it doesn't have to be three. But can I wash my hands four times? What do you guys think of that? Can I do it four or five times? Sometimes I look at my hand and I think I got dirt. So I'm just going to get the bar of soap and just go to washing it. Can I do this? Just get the bar of soap and just go crazy. Just washing the dirt off my hand. Can I do that? No. no. Exactly. Say it again. Get on the mic. Go ahead. Yes, no more than three. The anything over three is fanaticism. It's fanaticism. And you guys, we do not need no fanaticism. 
as Sister Bint Muhammad typed, just up to three. And thank you for typing in sentences, Bent Muhammad, because you're making, you, alhamdulillah, by you using sentences, I can share it to the people on social media. They, so they can write your answer down. That's the answer. Up to three, no more, as Sister Bent Muhammad typed. Okay, I'm still waiting on the Twitch to show up. I don't know why it's not showing up. Okay. Maybe the brother don't know what he's doing or the sister. Okay. Got to get one of the kids on there. The kids know how to work everything, including Twitch. One of the kids get on Twitch and try to type. Let me know if it shows up. This person don't know what they're doing. <laughs> okay, let's look at the next question. <laughs> As always, the kids has got to show you. Okay, next question. What is the Sunna? The Sunna way to put water in the nose and the mouth. And we had yesterday, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli demonstrated on camera how to do it because I couldn't do it. What is the Sunna way? Who can detail for us how to put water in the nose and the mouth? And when I say the sooner way, what am I asking? Can somebody tell me in plain, simple English? My niece has told me I have to make y'all see the meaning of sooner. It means uh, 10 different things, depending on how you use it. When I say what is the sooner way of putting no, uh, water in your mouth and nose, what am I saying in plain, simple English? He's talking about the way we don't have to do it. We don't have to do it. With, with Not really. That's This is another meaning. So this is an example of how sooner means more than one thing. When I say, what is the sooner way of putting water in my nose? What am I basically asking, guys, in plain, simple English? If they tell them. Oh, okay. The way the prophet, yeah, uh, if these Arabic, so yeah, if these Arabic too, so she knows. No, no, I'm asking, no, if he got it right, she's Arabic, so she knows. Okay, okay, y'all listen. If he got it right, the Arabic people know that, and that's what they tell me I need to do. Let y'all see how I get in the habit of using it. When I say, what's the sooner way? of washing my nose and mouth, I'm asking, how did the Prophet Muhammad wash his nose and mouth? So that's another meaning of the word sunnah. Sunnah not only means that it's a voluntary deed, it not only means that it's something I don't have to do, but it also means how did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do it? And I'm doing this to let y'all see how we use these words and sentences, and this is how it means. So I'm asking you, what is the sooner way of washing the nose and, and mouth? You're going to tell, I'm asking you, how did the Prophet Muhammad wash his nose and mouth? Now, who can answer? Rashida, get on the mic. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, washed his nose and mouth at one time. He snipped the water through his mouth and nose at the same time and then released it. That's, you, you explain, but how did he release it? That's good. How did he release it? He sniffed it in with the right hand, blew it out with the left. There you go. Don't forget that part, because that's the Sunan way. Like Shea Gatley showed. Okay. So you got to do the whole thing. Okay, so that's the way the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did his nose and mouth. Now, do I have to do it that way, Rashida? No, you don't. You know, how can I do it? You can just do one at a time. Do your mouth um, first and then do your nose afterwards. Exactly. Y'all understand that now. Okay? So I don't have to do it. And this is a, uh, important because one of the young brothers here uh, uh, sent me an email this morning. He said that it's kind of cute. One of our sooner follower kids, may Allah bless my babies, my little babies. He says, Sister Layla, I practice. I practice doing the sniffing in the mouth and the nose. He said, and I almost drowned. Oh, my little baby. My little Yusuf. 
my little shweeb, my little babies. They practice doing it the way the prophet did and almost drowned. <laughs> yeah, because you can drown off a teaspoon of water. Don't y'all know that? Yeah, you can bless somebody pour a teaspoon of water in your nose. You can drown. <laughs> they try to do it the way the prophet Salah Wasam did. So, alhamdulillah, if you can't do it that way, then you can do like Rashida said. Just do it one at a time. And I told you guys, that's what I do. I can't do them both either. I'll drown in a heartbeat too, baby. Layla, Layla almost died about a hundred times from drowning. Hello. So I got to go one at a time too. SubhanAllah. I thought that was so cute. I tried to do like the shake showed us. Me and my brother, we practice all night long. And I almost drowned. Ain't that cute? Fresno. Wasn't that cute? <laughs> yeah, so cute? My little sooner follower kids. And they come in here and answer these questions better than the adults do. <laughs> My babies. All right. Good job. Let's look at the next question. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where did it go? Y'all see I'm working these screens. Working the screen, Layla. And I ain't had no sleep. By the way, I ain't had no sleep, my guys, in a couple days. So I probably might get a little silly, silly today because I ain't had no sleep. Okay, let's look at the next question. Question number five. One must run his or her fingers through. Oh, oh no, let's change it. One must run his fingers through his beard when making wudu. Is that statement true or false? True. What do you guys think? True or false? True. A, a man must run his fingers through his beard when making wudu. True. Okay, let me look at true. the... Uh, hold on, let me switch screens. What y'all think on Facebook? And by the way, here's uh, Bit Muhammad's answer for the other one. Sooner for nose and mouth. Look what she wrote. Write it down. Sooner for nose and mouth. Use right hand to put water in the mouth. And using the same hand and water, inhale through the nose, into the nose. And use the left hand to blow the water out. Y'all see what she wrote? I'm going to keep it up there. That's the sooner way. And don't drown yourself like my babies did yesterday. My little babies, they drowned. Yes. <laughs> okay. Fatima said it's true that you must run your fingers through your beard. But this person here said it's not obligatory. Okay, also, Bent Muhammad said it's not obligatory. It's a sunan. Sister Ifti said it's not a must, but it is a sunnah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to do. Who's right? What do we do, guys, when we come upon a dilemma such as this? What do we do? Who's got the Dalil? Is it a Sunan? We got a lot of different answers here. Is it a Sunan or is it an obligation? What y'all think? Who's got some Dalil? So Allah, Allah already told us what the pillars are in the Quran. Y'all hear her, Dalil? What, Dalil, do you guys got that, that say that it is a pillar? Okay, this is a good question, and I'm going to tell you why. This is something that men to this day debate. I've heard some men say that it is not a pillar because Allah mentioned in the Quran what the pillars are of the, of the wudu. 
Then I hear other men say that it is a pillar because the prophet was asked. Remember that hadith we went over yesterday? I told y'all to remember it. The prophet was asked, why does he always do that to his beard? And he said that Allah commanded him to. So that's the evidence that both of those groups have. And I was trying to get Shake Atley on the phone to see if he could answer this for y'all, explain it. But for some reason, the Shake is busy because he ain't answering his phone. Let me see if I can get Shake Morsi. I would like a man to answer that for y'all. Hold on. Let's see if I can get Shake Morsi. I know the answer, but I want y'all to hear it from a man. Is it prayer time? Oh, oh no. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh Morsi. How are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you, Sister Lee? Okay, I'm doing a class on a, how to make voodoo. Question. Can't find Sheikh Atley to answer it. Can you answer this for the brothers? Is running your hand through the beard like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did... Is that a sunan or is it a pillar of the wudu? Okay, yes. He, well, we have to wudu, to make wudu like the prophet did. If 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 uh, the the beard is uh, uh, is thick, it's okay. It's okay to wipe from outside. But if it is little, light beard, you have to make the water go through. Okay, so if a beard like shit, this, and they didn't, y'all, that's what I thought I told y'all yesterday, y'all didn't hear. If it's a beard like Sheik Atley, that's when you do that thing with the grabbing and like shit like that, like the prophet did. But if they got a beard like yours or my brother Issa, they don't have to, right? Yes, because the water goes by itself. It is light, so... Yes. The water will touch the skin. That's but what I hear. Uh, thank you. You have to make this. Yeah. Okay. MashaAllah. Y'all get the answer, and I explained that to y'all yesterday. I don't know why y'all didn't get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Sheikh Atley came on and showed them how did he do how did he does his beard. But they didn't hear me. I guess they forgot when I said, if you got a goatee or a short uh, beard like, you know, Issa or you got, you know, the face. When you're doing the face, you're getting it. Subhanallah. Yeah, right. Exactly. They forgot. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for answering that for us. And uh, if yeah. I need you again, I'll call you back. Because I guess Sheikh Ali's Inshallah. missing. I can't reach him. Okay. Inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Did y'all forget that when I explained that to y'all yesterday? So yeah. if you got a beard like yeah. Mukhtar, look at Mukhtar. If you got a beard like Sheikh Atli. You got a beard like Mukhtar. They got big full beards that hang. Then it becomes, that's part of it. You would do like Sheikh Atley showed y'all. But if you got a beard like Sheikh Morsi, Sheikh Morsi doesn't have a full beard like that. His beard is just covers his face like my brother Issa. They got the goatee look with just little hairs here. Some people just can't grow a beard. Okay, so for those brothers, like Sheikh Morsi and my brother Issa, when they make wudu and do their face, the beard is done because it's short. But like Sheikh Atli and Mukhtar, they got to do the other thing. And my brother Issa's always been, this is just between you, y'all. My brother Issa, he's always been jealous of Mukhtar's beard. <laughs> he used to say, Mukhtar got a beard, mine won't grow. Yeah, Mukhtar got a beautiful beard. <laughs> you know, he's got a full beard. Most men want full beards because the prophet had a full beard. You know, you want to look like the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but not every man can grow a beard like Sheikh Atli has and like Mukhtar has. That, that That's just hard to do. Okay, so I told you guys that yesterday. So, yes, those two evidences are correct, but the prophet explained that. For the man who asked why he did it, that person didn't have a full beard, remember? In fact, the person that asked was a young boy. That young boy's name was Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira was a kid. He didn't have that beard when he asked that, you know? So doing the face was sufficient. Okay, is that clear? Everybody understand?
me look on YouTube too. There is Twitch typing. Y'all see the Twitch people? Oh, mashallah. Wait a minute. Norto, what are you doing on Twitch? There's Norto, y'all. Look where she at, Fresno. This is how Twitch looks, y'all. Y'all see her icon I put on the screen? The little purple little thing? That's Twitch. So it's working, Norto? They can type? What about Torvo? T-O-R-V-O. I'm connected there, too. I don't know how Torvo looks. But that's Twitch, guys. Look at Norto. Well, alhamdulillah, so I did set it up right. Good job. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got here. Exactly. And this was the Dalil. I want y'all to see the Hadith that Bint Muhammad wrote. This is the Hadith where the people that say it's an obligation, they use this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is what Allah told me to do. But the Prophet had a full beard. He had a beard like Sheikh Atli and Mukhtar. Abu Huraira was a young boy. He didn't have a full beard like that. He just had like uh, my brother Isa and Dr. Asim. Y'all see the type of beard Dr. Asim has? Let me put that picture up. Hold on. Look at Dr. Asim. I think I got his picture in here. Okay, look. Okay, you guys see the beard that Dr. Asim has in this picture. If when he makes wudu over his face, it covers his beard. This is how my brother Isa's is. They don't have to go underneath the jaw. They don't have to do the other stuff because it's covered. But then when you look at, look at Shagatli, look at Dr. Dramali, look at Mukhtar. All three of them have beards. They got full beards, Mukhtar, Dr. Dramali, and Shagatli. So when they do their wudu, they have to take it down and do underneath uh, uh, the, the jaw and like that because doing the face is not sufficient for them. Just doing the face is not going to touch the beard. Y'all see the difference? The hikmah, the wisdom of Allah. That's the wisdom of Allah. So for you brothers that have a beard like this, your face is sufficient. If you got beards like Mukhtar, Dr. Jamali, and Sheikh Atli, it's different. Okay? All right. Any questions on that? Mashallah. And Sister Fatima <laughs> explained how it's done. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made wudu, he would take a handful of water, put it under his jaw, and pass it through his beard. Y'all see that? And that's what Sheikh Atli demonstrated yesterday. Okay? Because he has that type of beard. And so does Mukhtar and Dr. Jamali. But not Sheikh Morsi and not Isa and not Dr. Asim. It's an Egyptian thing, but then again, Sheikh Atli's Egyptian and he got a full beard. So can't say it's an Egyptian thing because all of them are Egyptian. My brother, Asim, and Sheikh Morsi and Atli, but Atli got the beard. May Allah bless him with the beauty. That not every man has. Remember that, brothers. The beauty. Not every man has that beauty of that beard. Hello. Women like a beard. All right, let's look at the next question. <laughs> we do. The sisters like a beard. Okay, next question. What about this? Number six. A person must remove all jewelry from the body part when making wudu. Is this statement true or false? So if I'm going to make wudu over with my hands, I got to take off all my jewelry. If I got any bangles on my ankles, I got to take them off. If I have any jewelry on my arms, I have to remove them. Is this statement true or false? What do you guys think? What do you guys false. think? You don't. False. It's false. You don't have to take any jewelry off. You can keep them on because um, Aisha and Um Atiyah, they used to keep their jewelry on whenever they made ablution. 
Exactly, guys. You know, there's some hadith that speak about it, and you will find those hadith in Mishkat. That used to be my favorite collection when I was seven years old. The first book I ever read was Mishkat. But unfortunately, the majority of the hadiths in Mishkat are not authentic. <laughs> so, uh, those hadiths are weak and, and not authentic. Okay? The hadiths that you read in Mishkat, and there is a couple in, in Daoud and a couple in Termiti. Those hadiths are all questionable. They're weak, okay? And we don't deal with anything weak in Islam. Only the strong survive, okay? So if you come upon those hadiths, they're not authentic, okay? So you don't have to remove your jewelry as long as the water covers that body part. Y'all understand? Because remember, in order for the wudu to be accepted, the water must cover that entire body part. So if my rings are loose enough, I just move them up and make the wudu. My bracelets are going to fall down my arm. They're not going to get in the way of me making wudu. My ankle bracelet, it moves around. I can move it around while I make my wudu. Okay? So you don't have to remove your jewelry. What about this? When I do my face, do I have to take off my makeup? Do I have to get a washcloth and remove all my makeup? Does makeup break my wudu, in other words? What do y'all think of that? No, it doesn't. You don't have to take off your makeup. Exactly. The prophet's wives wore makeup. And like I told you guys, any hadith that you read that uses the word kohol. Kohol means makeup. That's what anybody who speaks fusha will tell you. It not only refers to the uh, antimony, but also the other makeup that a woman wear, because they wore makeup. Women been wearing makeup all since Allah made Eve. And there is no hadith that says the prophet commanded the women to remove their makeup. All Arabic women, all Persian women, all Indian women, all Turkish women wore makeup. Egyptians, they wore makeup when you dig up the tombs. What do they find in the tombs with, the, with Cleopatra and them? Bottles of makeup. So makeup's been around since Allah made Adam and Eve. So if it was haram for a woman to wear makeup, and if it broke her wudu, the prophet would have said she has to take off her makeup. There's no such thing. All we have to do is wet our hands with, with that water, you know, and do our face and rub it over our face like I've been showing y'all all week. This is it. I just made wudu and made prayer before, when I got home. Okay? That's good enough. And I always rub my face like this. That's it. I don't have to remove my coho. Okay? That's all I really got on. I know I look a little pale today, but I, all I got on is coho today, really. That's it. It's just, well, I got a little bit of stuff up here, too. It done dried, came off, though. Yeah, the voodoo took it off. But I look nice. Alhamdulillah, thank you. Thank you, I look nice. Alhamdulillah. Okay? So you don't have to wash all that stuff off, all right? Everybody got that? All right. Okay, let's look at the next question. Jayla, call your cousins. Okay, they want you to call them. Jayla? All right. All right, let me put the next question up. Hold on. Next question. I'm making it bigger so y'all can see. Woo, there it is. That's really big. What about this? True or false, all body parts must be washed three times except the head. All body parts must be washed three times except the head. True or false? True or false? What y'all think? Take the mic. It's false. Washing um, every part of the body, you can only wash it. I mean, you can wash it one, two, or three times. It doesn't have to be three times, but sometimes 
The Prophet wasalam, used to wash it one or two times just to show that it's okay. Exactly. And also, regarding the head, he would also just wash it one. Exactly. And that was my next question. And by the way, guys, we got Twitchers here. Anybody on Tova? Anybody on Tova so I can see how they look. This brother here is from uh, Twitch. MashaAllah. False. Good job. Welcome all Twitch uh, people. Look how many people I got in the live stream today, guys. Y'all see, I expanded. I'm taking the Dawa, the Sheikh Atli, and Layla Nasheba Dawa into the, 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 the internet on levels it's never been before. All the gamers are in my channel trying to figure out who is this crazy woman in here talking about some religion when we trying to play games. Hello. <laughs> Welcome here. <laughs> okay. What about this, guys? Did the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ever uh, wipe over his head more than once? Did he? Did no, he, do he only did it once. Yeah, go ahead. Exactly. He just did it once. He. They said no one's ever seen him do the head more than once. He's. They seen him do the other body parts three times or two times, but no one has seen uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do the head more than once. Okay, so that's good. That's good trivia to know. He did all the other body parts once or twice, but not the head. It was always just once. Okay, that's a good trivia question to remember to teach it to the kids, to the Sunnah follower kids. What about this? Question number eight. If a person just takes his hands back one time over the head, is that sufficient? In other words, do I have, if I just do this, I'm a woman. I got long hair. I'm going to um, do my head. I'm just going one time because I just got my hair done. I just got my hair done, honey, and it's busted. I got it straightened to the, it's, it's been flat on. It's hanging down to the ground. I'm going to go one time. That's it, because I don't want it to curl up. Is that sufficient? Can I do that? Yes, it is. I don't have to bring it back up, in other words. Can I, do I have no. to do this, or can I just go, Going girl? My hair is busted. One time, call it a day. Yes. yes one time is Good job. Good job. One time is sufficient. And I want you sisters to know that there's nothing wrong with going to the beautician to get your hair done, sisters. I get my hair done every two weeks because it's too long. Nobody got time for all that. And you got arthritis. I got a lot of elderly sisters in here. For you elderly sisters like me with arthritis, we ain't got time to be washing and combing and flat ironing and curling. You know, go pay the $80. That's all it costs. I pay $85 and the girl, the lady washes my hair, conditions it, blow dries it, and flat iron curls it and sends me out the door. It takes two hours. Send you out the door. Call it a day. Okay? Get your hair done. And then when you make your voodoo over it, we're going to talk about the wiping. But just one time. That's it. One time. You ain't got to go no... You know, all that. All right. Okay, I'm going to stop right here for today.